Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us choose to rejoice and be glad. In Him who has given us this day, along with everything needed that we may live a victorious and a glad life. And so as we spend these few minutes of a meditation, let us concentrate on what God is trying to tell us. Today's meditation can be titled with Acts of Righteousness. In Math, the Gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 6 verse 1 says, Be careful not to do your acts of righteousness before men to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. These are the words of Jesus Christ himself. What we call the Sermon on the Mount, beginning at chapter 5, continuing through chapter 6 and 7. It contains the teachings of Jesus Christ. You remember the commission he gave to his disciples and through them to the church is to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Because all authority in heaven and earth are all given to me. Therefore you go. And making nations as my disciples by baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son and of the Holy Spirit. And teaching them everything I have taught you. And so I mentioned this to let you know where you will find the teaching of Jesus. In the Gospel according to St. Matthew chapters 5 to 7. And then elsewhere in the New Testament, especially in the Gospels, the parables through the teachings that Jesus gave through parables. And then uh, Gospel according to St. John chapters 13, 14, 15, 16. These are the places you can find the teachings of Jesus. And let us make sure that we know these teachings so that we can teach others and make them disciples. And But here the teaching is, one can do acts of righteousness for one of these two purposes. Number one, absolutely for the glory of God. Not for human recognition or human applause. And secondly, you can do the same work with a selfish motive for men to see and then reward you. And Jesus said, if that is your intention, then you get your rewards from men and here temporarily. And you shall receive nothing from your heavenly father. The number one things uh, I would like you to consider is if believers, whether a church member or a pastor or an evangelist or any other gospel workers, does a good work for the admiration of others or for selfish reasons, they will lose their reward and a praise from God. So as a believer, as a pastor, as an evangelist, as a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ, you have to choose from whom you want the real reward. From men, from the world, or from God himself. And if you want to get a reward from God himself, then you have to close your eyes to human recognition and human rewards and uh, uh, people's applause. And uh, I wanted to you know, instead of seeking reward and praise from God. When you do a good work, 
it amounts to nothing. Instead, they will be exposed. You will be exposed as hypocrites who under, under guise of uh, giving glory to God are really seeking glory for himself or glory for themselves. The best example of this is found in the book of Acts chapter 5 where I have earlier in one of the meditations I have, met, I have mentioned that. There is a husband and wife team Ananias and Sapphira. And they sold their property and brought the money at the apostles' feet. You know what happened. And they pretended and they confessed that that was the entire amount they received from the sale. While the Holy Spirit, you know my friends, you cannot hide anything from God. You cannot hide anything from the Holy Spirit. You cannot hide anything. Nothing is hidden from His sight. We must remember that. It is foolishness to go on acting and doing things, saying, oh, God doesn't see it. Or you say, no one will know. No one will see it. And uh, that's, that's the reason why people go ahead and do things that are not pleasing to God. But we must remember Nothing is hidden from God's sight and no one can hide it, anything from God. This foolish couple made that terrible mistake. And as soon as Peter asked the husband, Is this the only amount you got? He said, Yes. And Peter said, How could you lie to the Holy Spirit? You have not lied to a man, but you are lying to to the Holy Spirit, to a triune God who has already seen what you have done. Hearing that, he fell and died. Now, my friends, this is the problem. What were they doing? They were doing this good work, thinking that it was a wonderful work, and therefore uh, they wanted others to see it and applause them, applaud them and appreciate them and recognize them. And so they were exposed. But the judgment upon them also came suddenly. Both husband and wife died because they told a lie. And that is why Jesus said, do not do your good work for men to see or to be seen by the world and appreciate you, then you already receive your reward. Now God is not demanding any such work. But once you do, or vow to do something for God, let it be done selflessly and with sincerity of heart, and absolutely and only for the glory and honor of our God. And therefore, before you do any such good deed, check your motive. What is your intention? You are a pastor, you may be a good preacher, evangelist, but why do you preach? And why do you uh, uh, pastor? Is there any selfish motive there should not be even a small trace of selfishness or self-motive. Because when God looks, He does not look superficially upon the work you do, but He goes beyond that and try to see and want to see and will see your intention, your motive. And knowing this, my friends, let us be very careful because God is a consuming fire and we shall never forget it. And secondly, Jesus in the same chapter speaks of acts of righteousness in three areas. 
so when you when you read the the verses of uh, verses uh, 15 to 18 or uh, 5 to 18 there are three areas of work that Jesus mentioned and um, the number one work is giving how do you give and why do you give and the second one is in the area of prayer and why do you pray the Pharisees those days used to pray standing in the middle of the road or in the center of the temple lifting their both hands up pray, pray loud prayers and long prayers from to be heard by others not for the glory they are not seeking God they want people to know they are uh, saints. My friends, you cannot fool God. And the third area is on fasting and prayer. Verses 15 to 18. And uh, giving references, chapter, uh, verse, verses 5 to 8. And uh, fasting is verses 15 to 18. Christ's condemnation of doing acts of righteousness to be seen by others challenges much of a contemporary Christian activity including competition or competing for bigness and advertising one's success and performing and entertaining in the church and wanting the number one position. This is happening in, in, in Christian churches and Christian organization. The competition is who will be the number one position in number one position. And even giving, you know, mission giving, there is a competition. I, you know, there are, there are gifts given to those who give the most. My brother, the Bible says, according to one's ability, let him give. And you know, the Father in heaven who sees, also sees how much you give. He remember that poor widow who who gave, who put in the offering bag uh, the smallest coins, two coins available those days. And Jesus was watching everybody's giving. And everybody he saw uh, gave out of their abundance. But then Jesus commended the giving of this poor widow by saying, this woman has paid more than anyone else. For they have paid out of their abundance, but this poor woman gave out of nothing. And my friends, always remember the motive. Check your motive and your intention. And uh, let me remind you once again, Christ's requirement to receive his commendation and his reward on the day of reckoning is quite different. It is not going to be on the basis of your success. It is not going to be on the basis of how big your congregation or your organization is. Or on the basis of how much you gave. Nothing like that. On the day of reckoning, you and I stand before the judgment seat of Christ. What would you like to hear the Master say? He would say, he said in a parable this. He would say such servant who did everything selflessly and absolutely for the glory of God. And even when somebody commend them, they will only say, no, we are not worthy. 
We don't deserve any recognition. We have only done our duty. And the father will say, well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in the little things I gave you to do. But now you enter into my father's kingdom and its rest. This is the way God is going to see your work. And let him see. And let him appreciate with these words. For whom are you doing? Why are you doing what you are doing? Let it not be to get the world's applause. And let me tell you, my friends, there is a saying like this. The crowd's applause does not mean God's approval. On the other hand, what is approved of God may not receive much loud applause. Does it matter to you? No, it doesn't matter to me. Because I don't do anything for God to get man's applause. I do it absolutely for God's glory. This is God's word for you today. And God bless you as you quietly do the things that you are supposed to do for the kingdom of God and be happy and satisfied that God has seen your work and He has a reward for you. May the Lord bless you as you strive to please God in everything you do. Let man think anything but God, what He says, matters. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the Holy Spirit who gives us the power and the guidance and the leading to do the things that we are supposed to do for the kingdom of God in a manner and way that God sees it, He rewards it, and He approves it. In Jesus' name, Amen. God bless you, my friend. This is a wonderful day. Once again, I say, enjoy this day for God's glory. Amen.